in our group and, and our whole movement is against victims' family members. Here's one right here. That's a tough introduction. I better perform that. I don't know what to do. Uh, when I speak, I, uh, I sort of get an outline in my mind. And, but I really don't know where I'm going to go. Uh, so if I ramble, once I get going, I'm pretty good. Uh, he, he mentioned the film Zero. I made it uh, in 2006. I, I didn't make it. I was in it. I was at the Phoenix Convention, and the Italian film group uh, were doing a documentary, and they asked me to do it. And I do this a lot. I just, since this happened, well, let me just give you a quick, quick background. I was a member of Peaceful Tomorrows. That's a group of 9-11 family members that lost people at 9-11. Okay, Peace of Tomorrow's comes from a Martin Luther King speech. An eye for an eye does not make for peaceful tomorrows. So I got an opportunity to speak around the world. I was in Bogota, Colombia. I was really lucky. I felt lucky to get out of that country because I spoke on national TV. We had a big conference of 2,000 people, all innocent civilians that have been dying throughout uh, Central South America. And I always talk, and, and people love to have me. I, I went on a stone walk in Japan. I got to talk to people in Japan. But every time I would talk, I would talk about the blowback of American foreign policy. People used to love to hear that. It always made people feel good. You know, it's very important for me to understand history and try to connect the dots. And that's all I've been trying to do is connect the dots. Why this happened. So I, you know, and, and I've been able to speak to the world. And that's been very important to me. But there was that one time, and I still am a member of Peaceful Tomorrow, it's just one of the people, but there are 501c3, which means you can't take money and talk politics. And that was my biggest mistake in 2004, but I, had, I have a phenomenal amount of anger. I don't know what to do with it. I can't do what people did down at Ground Zero yesterday. We are, they were just fantastic. My son and my wife are with me. They try to stay away from me. They don't like to talk about 9-11. We'll have to talk about that in a little while. But we walk down uh, Vesey Street, coming to church, and all of We Are Change are there. And they're engaging people. It's phenomenal how many people are listening to them. One young man was standing there, he once had 15 people in front of him, talking about the towers falling. It's truly, truly unique. Then they march down to the pan station. I had to be down there. And my wife just gets so upset. She's afraid because I have such a temper. I'm, I'm in trouble with the cops in my neighborhood. When they stop me and they say something, and I just say, well, fuck you. I get so mad. I just always, I always have anger. And it's dangerous. I really try to work hard at it. But I have to have that anger. I can't give it up because I'm afraid of getting depressed. That's the other side of the coin. Because like a weekend like this, it's, you, you spend your whole life trying to stay even, even keel. But you really try to avoid the highs. Because when you know, especially in this case, because I, I do this every single day of the week. I've been doing it since the day after Bobby, my son's name was Bobby, the day after he died. So I read about it constantly. And a weekend like this, I come up and you are at a high. Even though it's a very difficult thing to go to Ground Zero, but you're with all the people that are feeling the same way you do. And that's a high. Because back in your neighborhood, you never get that. People want to avoid you, especially me, because they're afraid I'm going to start giving a lecture about 9-11. People you know, in my neighborhood, I hate it. I keep saying to my wife, we've got to get out of here. We've got to go someplace else. But any place else we go, it's going to be the same thing. People are overwhelmed by what happened that day. And it's very difficult for them to deal with. I lost a lot of friends. I know they're my friends, but they really don't want to be around me. That's why it's so great to be around people up here. I would give anything, anything in the world. If my wife wanted to, I'd move here right now. I'd stay here now and I'd never leave. Because everybody in New York, not that they might feel the same way I do, but they know what happened on 9-11. They suffer. They all suffer. Every, I don't want to be a victim. There's people suffering all around the world. People in South, you know, when I was in Bogota, to see what happens down there. So anyway, again, I'm rambling. The peaceful tomorrow's thing is everybody wanted to hear me speak. 
And I talked about that blowback. This is why people around the world hate us, because of our military industrial complex. And it's been this way forever. It's going to be forever unless something's done. Okay? But there was a point during the 9 11 Commission hearings. I was there, to me, it was a sham from the very beginning. But there was a time, I think, I just, and that's what I got on CBC. And they, well, later on they came and did a documentary. But CBC, after Condoleezza Rice spoke, they wanted to do an interview with the Commission hearing. Now, I made 95% of the Commission hearings. I'm going to mention that later on. But CBC wanted to do an inter interview after Condoleezza Rice. Well, if you heard Condoleezza Rice at the Commission, and this is what I, I, you know, I truly, I hate to say hate, but I do hate. I hate every commissioner. Like I even hate to see people in some of these blogs, they say even King and, or Kane and uh, Hamilton said we were set up to fail. Well, those bastards knew they were gonna fail from the very beginning. It was a set up from the get-go. So then coming out, you know what they're doing? They're just trying to make themselves, and look, I the people make them look good. They are part of it. I consider them part of the murder. If anybody's convicted, these people should be convicted. I mean, and again, you know, sometimes it's anger speaking, but you know, the candidate, everyone. To me, everyone in government now is part of this conspiracy to cover up the murder of my son. And remember, it's important for me to keep myself independent. That's why I try not to get involved in groups or people, because people want to tell me what to do. But I'm not going to have anybody tell me what to do. All right? So I'm with Peace of Tomorrow's. I decided after Condoleezza Rice, oh, anyway, I went to CBC. And this is when I learned, if you were at the commission hearings, after every hearing, this is a murder investigation. I'm sitting here. All right, I want some answers. A couple times I thought, geez, maybe something's going right here. We well, after Condoleezza Rice, Ben Venice's questioner, uh, he was asking about the August 6th uh, memo that Bin Laden to, is going to attack the United States. And they're trying to question her, and she's filibustering. Her bullshit about his, history, it's, you gotta keep it in historical perspective. And I was just getting so pissed off, it was ridiculous. And then afterwards, and this is what bothers me, it bothers me about the 9-11 families, I just don't understand it. I never talk down to them, I've never, you know, I, I, I just, whatever they do, they do. But suddenly, after Condoleezza Rice is talking, everybody walks up to her, pats her on the back, and is smiling. And I said, what? What is this? So suddenly, I'm in the back of the room, and I forgot I had the CPC interview. So suddenly, I have a mic. And I just say, top of my side, I said, this is all fucking bullshit. talk to any family or if you take them aside, but nothing was being done. But that's when I learned that the anger pays off. Suddenly I had 40 mics in front of me. Everybody wanted to hear what I had to say. The sudden has to speak up. The civility at the commission. Everybody was friends. You know, we're doing a murder investigation, but afterwards everybody's hugging, laughing, doing this stuff. And I said, what in the world's going on here? It was an absolute joke. Absolutely politically correct. And it's sad, but then even not a fucking family murder doing this. So after that, I made that decision. Well, I can't talk nicely in civ with civility. I, I have to try when I'm on the documentaries. I have to try when I'm on TV. Well, TV, they won't. They, TV always had me out. Again, they felt comfortable with me getting up there and talking about blowback. I don't want revenge. I don't want people dying. Well, that's great. Everybody loves to hear that. Oh, here's a family member who doesn't want to take revenge. Again, it's all make me feel good. And believe me, everybody in the peace movement, I love them, I honor them, right? but I couldn't do it anymore. So they all suddenly, if the high school calls me, the college calls me, I said, look, I'd love to speak. Believe me, if I could spend the rest of my life speaking in colleges and high schools, that's all I do. And I do it without pay. I go anywhere in the world if a high school or college asks me to speak. But the thing is, the only way I speak is to speak honestly. And it's my truth. And I have an advantage. I am a parent. I'm not getting paid to do this. I am a parent. My son was murdered. 